and welcome to our cowboy campfire cooking series. You know what? You've let us know that you like this, so we are going to continue to cook outside like this. Now, you know, back in the days of the cowboy, you had your dried beans on the trail. The camp chef could find that easy to store, pull them out. Now, it was a long process. Now, you don't just cook them for an hour or two. You got to cook these all day long. Now, we've all had those soup beans that are bland and not very tasteful. This right here, I tell you what, I've messed around with beans for years. These are really robust. You get a lot of flavor from the fat of the pork that we're gonna put in it. We got a lot of onions, we got some carrots. We've got some seasonings down here that I'm gonna share with you, some secret seasonings that I really like that bring out the flavor. And you know what? You saw us when we were curing bacon with me and my friend Jay. You saw us cut the skin off of that bacon. I never throw anything like that away. That goes into the freezer and when I need it, I've got it. Now, if you don't have anything like that, you can go to the store and get some jowl or some hocks. Any type of pork that has fat on it, even with a bone in it, it gives that good flavor. I'm going to use the skin that I cut off for this. I'm going to cut up one big yellow sweet onion, big one. I like that onion flavor. I'm going to cut up a bunch of carrots, cut them into small pieces. I like that carrot flavor as it cooks through there, it softens up. You won't even see the carrots in the end. And I'll tell you what, a few little secrets I'll show you in a minute as we get things stirred up. So now I have my nine quart pot here that is great for a Dutch oven or cooking over the fire like this. I like this big pot because it's so versatile. Now, what I'm gonna do, I poured about a half a gallon of water to get started. Now, obviously, when you're cooking things over a long period of time, you have to watch how hot things get. You have to come back and stir it. If you leave it for long periods of time and your water goes out, you're gonna have a bunch of burnt beans and nobody's gonna be fed and everybody's gonna be angry. We got our fire going, we got our water heating up. I have pre-soaked my beans once again. Let them set for about an hour. That lets that water penetrate them, let them swell up and gets the cooking process going. Now once this water gets close to boiling, I'm gonna go ahead and take my beans and put them in there. I'm using pinto beans here. I've got two pounds. Now you can buy your pinto beans at the store in great big bags. I prefer to buy them in one pound bags. If it's just a couple people, you can use one bag. Tonight we're gonna have four or five people. I'll probably have two bags, two pounds. Now to get this process started, once again, I like my beans to be full of flavor. Now, if you just cook them in water and a couple of onions, you're gonna have a little bit of flavor. I like to add broth and some things throughout this whole process to really bring out that meat flavor to add to the beans. Chicken broth. I'm gonna take and put a good amount of chicken broth in here. That's gonna give me some flavor. And I'm gonna add about, oh, 16 ounces for those beans to soak up as they're cooking to really bring some flavor out and add more flavor is I'm gonna get me some chicken bouillon cubes. I'll toss those in there. That gives you some salt and some flavor. So you don't have to add tons and tons of salt. That right there gives you a good base and a good stock. I'm gonna take my skin. Now you remember this. Oh, that smells so good. Now look at that. That is absolute wonderful pig skin. Now, my piggies are growing fast. We've got them out in the pen. We just got them a couple days ago and they're growing by the day. And they love to eat. I'm gonna take my big sweet yellow onion. I'm gonna dump in there. Now see, it's not all about the beans. It's about what you put in with those beans. Now let me tell you what, something about cooking outside, you've got that smoke flavor wrapping into that bowl. And I'm telling you what, there's just nothing like cooking outside. And the perfect bowl of beans continues with this. Now I discovered this several years ago. An old lady told me about this. It's called Nature's Seasonings. Now this is great in any kind of beans and any kind of uh, kale and anything like that. I really love it. It's got no MSG, but it has celery seed. It's got a great flavor. It's got the salt and the pepper and the garlic and all these assorted flavors. Again, no MSG, a little bit of onion powder. This is wonderful, wonderful for soups and beans and things like that. Now I'm gonna take and generously put some of this out here. And you know, if you're gonna use salt and pepper and things like that, this kind of has all that in it. Plus your celery seed taste and your garlic and onion powders. It's a great additive to soup. And I like the fact that it has no MSG. I'm not guaranteeing that my bouillon cubes don't have a little MSG in them. Okay, there you have it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put my carrots in. Now, 
Again, it's not all about the beans. Beans are the part that fill your belly up and give you plenty of protein. Now I'm gonna take my two pounds of pinto beans or ham beans, whatever you wanna call them. And I'm gonna have my pre-soaked beans and I'm gonna dump them in here. And over time, combine with the onions and the carrots and all that good stuff. Now, if you're intimidated by cooking outside, cooking over fire, it's just common sense. It's just like cooking over a stove. You watch your water, and when you get the boil you want, when you get the nice rolling boil, if you want to turn it down, you put your wood down a little bit or bring your bowl up and just watch it and get it like you want it. I'm going to bring this to a nice slow boil, then I'm going to cover it. And I'm going to check it about every 20 minutes. Now, for the cornbread recipe to go along with this, I like my jalapeno cornbread. You've seen it before. Check out our campfire cooking series with our burgoo, and you'll see how we Dutch oven. Same, same pot and pan. I've got another one of these nine quart deals. You turn that into a Dutch oven. You basically take, and I like a Weisenberger mix. I'll put in there. I'll make my cornbread, have it right over here. Heap some coals on the bottom, coals on the top. Mm, mm, mm. But tonight, it's all about the perfect bowl of beans. Now, you can think I'm crazy, but I'm gonna put a little bit of sugar in here. Now, if you look at most containers of the soup that you like, if you buy store-bought soup, there's always sugar in it, and quite a bit. Now, when you find that you have something really salty, if you add some sugar, it brings out that flavor even more. You may not even know that the sugar taste is in there, but I like to put, and I'll probably just put just a, you know, just a couple tablespoons in here, but that really, brings those flavors out and you may not even know it but you have that sweet and salty together all right now you can see that right now the beans aren't boss they got a lot of company with the onions and the carrots and the pork and all that good stuff but as as this moves along these will kind of meld in and it'll all become one big yummy i'm gonna taste one more time to make sure it's about where i want it Look who just walked in the frame. This is Chappie, the evil farm dog. He has killed 17 men today. I'm gonna try to get him in order, try to get him in check. Look at that vicious face. Before he kills anybody else, I'm gonna let him down. Easy on those bad people. Now I got that to a good rolling boil, added a little more water to it. I'm now gonna knock my fire back a bit. I got the temperature I want, I got the taste I want, and I'm gonna go away, but I'm gonna check with it. Keep your water up here. As you check back, you might add a little water. Now, when you have to add a little water, make sure you check the taste as you go along because the more water you add, the more that dilutes that taste. Cover that up. And I'll be back to check that in just a little bit. All right, I got a nice, even, low boil going. Now, this has been going for a couple hours. I had a chance to go feed the pigs, check them out. They're getting huge. They're gonna be monster pigs. I'm gonna have enough. Well, I better, gosh, they might hear me. But we'll have enough of this kind of stuff right there for a lot of beans. But you can see it's thickening up. Now, I like my bean soup kind of thick. I don't like a whole lot of water in it. But you do have to continually check this because if you're not careful, if you walk away and your flame happens to get up, you can ruin your whole pot. So you do have to check with it, stir on it. I can tell everything's really coming to a nice blend in there. It's thickening up. My beans are boiling and I tried them and they go at the perfect consistency. Now you know when your beans are done because they're nice and soft. Everything's dissolved in there. And the only thing you need to have your own cowboy campfire cooking deal is a couple pigs a wild and crazy killer farm dog, a cowboy hat, a few assorted skulls. Actually, you don't need any of that. All you need is some cooking ware, just like this, some cast iron cooking stuff. Invite some friends, sit down, tell some stories. I got me some cowboy campfire beans. And let me tell you what, my friends will vouch for this. You got that nice pork taste in there. Got to taste the onions and the carrots, and the spices you have, the celery. I'm telling you what, this may be the perfect camp.
fire bean soup. I'm gonna eat every bit of it. And maybe later people will be mad at me. We don't care. We're gonna cowboy.